Is that better? All right. Hallelujah. I don't know that I don't know how much uh, hopefully I can make some sense out of this. I, I've got a bunch of scribbles here. I have a I have another message, but I just don't I think I want to do this tonight. Praise the Lord. I just feel like this is what the Lord's leading us to. Amen. So let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And of course they're not, because if your thoughts aren't the same, your ways won't be the same, will they? I mean, our thoughts dictate what we do, where we go, how we do it, right? So God is saying that if, if a wicked man will, if a wicked will forsake his way, which means what he's thinking about doing, what he's been doing, amen, as a result of his thoughts, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven. Now this gets into us agreeing with those ways and those thoughts. As the rain comes down, the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but where watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Praise the Lord. So what the Lord is saying is, in the natural, our thoughts are not like God's thoughts. And as a result of that, our ways are then not like God's ways. But he tells us, he gives us a clue. This is Obviously, this is prophetic. This is in Isaiah. But Isaiah is speaking into something that God's going to do, that God wants to do. And so he tells us, if we will align our thoughts with his thoughts, we can say then what God says and it'll produce the same results that God intended it to produce. Right? So there's a whole lot more about how we think, because obviously how we think determines what we're going to do and say, and what we do and say determines whether or not we get the blessings of God. They don't just happen as, you know, like God just flings it out there, and we just it falls on us. Right? There, you have to renew your mind to the Word of God in order to get the results that that Word says. Otherwise, everybody would be getting blessed because that God wants us to be blessed, but there's a procedure, there's a way in which this works. And it's, it has to do with us being born again. A carnal mind is enmity with God, but God gives us a new mind, a mind like God's, but we have to renew it. We have to constantly be dealing with the thoughts that are in our mind. Amen? I mean, there's a difference between your brain and your mind. Your mind is like overseeing. Have you heard, you know, the, the expression, a state of mind? That's the state of mind that they were in? Well, that means that their thinking is all going one way, and that's the state of mind that they're in. And as you change your thoughts, amen, your mind can rule over that. That's why you renew your mind, not your thoughts. Am I making any sense to you? This is why I was questioning whether I should do this, because I don't know. Praise the Lord. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So let me just, let's just read some scriptures here, and then we'll get into this. this is, I've got a bunch of stuff here that is... I hear, some of you remember here a few years back I preached about the quantum physics and the quarks and all this stuff. Well, that's what this is, but it takes it further to the point where we now know what God is actually doing because of the advances of science, right? We're finding out that God was right. <laughs> you know, like we didn't know. But science is finding out that he's right. And so uh, it's like, uh, you know, for centuries people thought the world was flat. But the Bible declared it to be round or to be at least uh, an oval. 
It talks about, you know, how God over the, the circle of the earth, you know, back in Genesis. And I think that that's why Christopher Columbus and some of the others who seemed to be really outrageously bold and brave were just believers. So that we're not going to fall off of this thing. If we're going to do anything, we're going to come right around and end up right where we left, right? It's a circle. So that's what we find out is given enough time, man will catch up, you know, and realize God was right all the time. It's kind of like when you're, you know, when your kids are small and they think you're, you, you know, you're, as a teenager, your parents are just so stupid, you know. The older they get, the smarter we get. Right? I mean, by the time they get to be in their 40s, they find out, well, it wasn't so stupid after all. Maybe they actually knew what they were talking about. Well, it's kind of that way with man and God. You know? So anyway, let's look at some scriptures here. Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. And it's, it's really freaky almost how God has done this. And we have, it's as always, you know, we confess the word and we declare you know, what the Scripture says about situations and circumstances. But what is amazing about it is there's scientific evidence for this. Not that the science is greater than God's Word, but it validates everything that God has done. And everything that God tells us to do is scientifically a reality. And so the world looks at us and we're, we're confessing this and we're declaring this and that and they're thinking, look at these morons, they're in denial. No, what we're doing is, is light years ahead of where the average American is or average human is in terms of relating to their creation and their creator then. Amen? So because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Now let me just say this about that. The carnal mind, the natural mind, disconnected from God, is at odds with God. It's against God because it's not subject to the law of God. What is the law of God? What you say is what you get. Amen? If you're speaking in agreement with the Word of God, that's how the promises are manifested, is by you declaring God gave us authority, and what we say changes stuff. Whether you understand it or not is a whole other ballgame. But the carnal mind is totally opposed to that. Right? That's why they say such stupid things. You know, like, my back is killing me. Or, you know, uh, I'm dying to see this movie. Or whatever it might be. You know, it's just stupid stuff. But th those are just ob the obvious crazy things. But we do things like that, or the world does things like this all the time. And it's counterproductive. It's working against God and His way of doing things. Amen? All right, verse 27 of that same chapter. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So he searched the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How does he know that what the will of God is? By the mind of the Spirit. Right? The mind of the Spirit is, is in agreement with God. Amen? Amen? So we're talking about walking in the Spirit a lot of times and things like that, and that's all it is, literally, uh, or I guess uh, the simplest definition would be simply to operate from what God says, from the mind of God. That's walking in the Spirit. That's declaring what God says to be the reality, His Word to be the final Word in any situation and over every circumstance. Amen? All right, let's go to chapter 11 of this uh, Romans and verse 34. I can do this tonight because I trust you guys. Not that I don't trust the rest of them, but I just think I can stumble around up here and get away with it with you. The others may be really upset about it, so praise the Lord. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Amen? Rhetorical question, obviously. But there's good news. Amen? Chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, the mind of God. Getting into agreement with the mind of God. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. 
you'll be thankful for these scriptures once I get to rambling around here and this other stuff. So, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that me that He may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Who hath known the mind of the Lord that He may instruct him? And we're not about instructing him, but we have the mind of Christ, which is in total agreement with God. Right? All right. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you then, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, how do you do that? By the thoughts. You establish the state of mind by the thoughts you have. Where do you get your thoughts? From the Word of God. That establishes a frame of mind, and that mind if it's in agreement with this, is the mind of Christ, and that is how you then are able to produce what God has declared is ours, our inheritance, amen, what we have promises for, praise the Lord. Now, I don't want to make this a science lesson, but I want you, what I want you to understand is what we do and what we declare, there's substance for this as well as spiritual teaching. In other words, I'm not saying, I'm saying that the spiritual teaching should be enough, and it is, but... If you understand some of the basis for this, God knows science. I mean, God created everything. The scientists are just finding stuff out that God already created. I mean, He put it out there for us. To I, I think the more we understand about science, the more God is revealed, the more He becomes real to any rational thinking person, and certainly anybody that's born again can see that. Praise the Lord. So here, here we're going to start with this. Now, we know... We talk about healing, right? Speaking to sickness and disease, speaking to our own body, speaking to the bodies of other people. We just had prayer for people tonight that are, that have physical issues and, and situations, right? Well, this works for anything, but I'm speaking for the moment anyway about this physical conditions that we all deal with in this natural world, right? In this fallen world. So we start with DNA. And DNA is deoxyribonuclei. And so what that is, it's nucleic acid, and uh, that's just the long name for what DNA is. DNA, most of you all have seen this stuff before, and you know what I'm talking about, but I'm just going to go through it just to make it clear. Uh, nucleic acid that is bound in double helical chains by hydrogen bonds between the bases, forming the basic material in the chromosomes of the cell nucleus, meaning these are tiny, tiny, tiny things that, you don't see with the natural eye. It takes tremendous magnification to even see the, the double helix of the DNA, not to mention what is going on in the nucleus of that. Amen? So it contains, DNA contains the genetic code, and it transmits the heredity, hered, heredity patterns. In other words, that's why you look like your dad or your mom, or you know what I'm saying? Or that's why... Doctors will ask you questions like, is there any history of heart attacks in your family? Why? Because they know that DNA, if they, could, if they test it, will find that that same pattern is in you that was in your parents. I'm talking about from a world perspective. That's why they do it. If there's cancers in your family, okay, they know that in that DNA there is a point in time where that will show up in a person's life. Right? That's, that's why they ask you all those questions on the questionnaires when you go to the doctor. Because they understand that DNA is passed down, right? And that DNA is going to determine certain things about the human characteristics. Not only the way you look, but how you feel. It, it, alcoholism. I mean, this is all the things that we have heard in the past. And it's why the Bible says the sins of the parents that don't love God or the, that don't connect with God under the Old Covenant those things will be passed on for a thousand generations. Why? Because in their DNA. The sicknesses, the curse of the sickness and so on and so forth that it talks about are there. But it ends with those who come to God. Right? To those that love God, this isn't the reality, right? So here's, here's, how, that, here's how that works. This Dr. Herbert Benson, who is a, uh, the dean of Harvard Medical School and the Institute of Heart Math, which is an international nonprofit research organization researching DNA and its effects on, on people and so forth. They discovered that DNA actually changes shape according to the way we think. Praise the Lord. 
So DNA determines if people are going to have certain diseases, if they're going to have sicknesses, if they're going to have mental issues, if they're going to have, you just name it, go down the list, and, and that's what they say DNA does, right? Well, God came to destroy that path. Amen. He came to take that out of the hands of the natural and put it into the hands of His children so that we can speak the things that are not as though they are. We can literally, and that's what I'm talking about, the process of thinking and choosing is the most powerful thing in the universe after God. And it's a gift from God. We have been given free will. We're the only animals. We're not animals, but you know what I'm saying. We're the only mammals. We're the only thing on this planet that has the ability to think and speak. That's what makes us like God. Amen? And it's a gift. It's a gift from God. Amen? And there's a sensory world of our five senses. There's the world of electromagnetism and the atom. And then there is the subatomic quantum world. Quantum physics is a way of explaining how things that make up atoms and make uh, everything that there is, amen, it explains how those things that make up atoms work. And it makes sense of how the smallest things in nature work. Praise the Lord. So quantum simply means energy. Quantum physics then tells us how electromagnetic waves, like light waves and particles, work. Quantum mechanics is the mathematical framework used to describe this energy and how it works. You don't really need to remember any of this. I'm just saying it. Praise the Lord. Using quantum physics, scientists can describe, they can predict, and they can quantify how we choose from all of the options. Praise the Lord. This is a way of measuring free will or describing it using a mathematical formula. We have free will, do we not? Praise the Lord. In essence, quantum physics says that, one, your consciousness affects, affects, I should say, the behavior of subatomic particles. Your consciousness. Two, particles move backward and forward in time and appear in all places all at once. <laughs> That'll mess up your physics right off the bat, right? Because they're moving forward and backwards, but they're everywhere all at the same time. Praise the Lord. The universe is connected with transfers of information that are faster than light. In other words, our, the synapses in our mind are quicker than the speed of light, faster than, that, than light can travel. Amen? Quantum theory converts science's conceptions of humans from just observers affected by the world that we're in to free-thinking agents whose conscious choices affect the physical world. Uh, praise the Lord. That would be like, I curse that cancer. Right? We're not just observers, which is what we've always been told we are. That we're just here kind of the of being affected by everything that goes on in the world. No, the truth is what quantum physics has discovered is that we, our consciousness has the capability, amen, of affecting and changing the world. Matter, real things, tangible things, amen? So that's with our thoughts, with our thinking, amen? So the observer determines the direction in which the possibilities may collapse or you run out of them. In other words, let me let me just say it this way. In, in, a, in the quantum universe, as we, the observers, affect phenomena, space and time, we turn possibilities into realities. This is everything that the Bible teaches us, amen, about how we are to operate. Minds change matter. Praise the Lord. Here's a simple way of understanding this observer effect that we're talking about. Each day, 
when you get up in the morning, you go through events and circumstances of your life, and you're faced with multiple, you know, possibilities to choose from. Right? I mean, what you're going to eat for breakfast. Right? What you're going to wear to work or whatever. How you're going to react to other people's attitudes. Right? Yeah, you're making these choices all the time, right? It's up to you, with your ability to think, to direct the choice. This is what Isaiah 55 is talking about, right? The thoughts you're having are creating choices that are leading you in a bad way, right? And you, because your thoughts are not like God's thoughts, then your ways are not like God's ways, and you're in a mess. But if you'll turn back to God... He'll fix. Praise the Lord. So it's up to you with your ability to think to direct the choice. So you collapse all the probabilities into one choice. That's what I mean by the collapsing. In other words, you can have oatmeal. You can have a donut. You can have, you know, grits. You can have, you just go down the list. You can have pizza. You can have whatever you want for breakfast. But at some point, you collapse all that by making a choice. True, putting on the clothes, whatever you're going to do. That's what that's what's happening. You you're, you have the ability to direct a choice, and so you collapse all those possibilities into one choice: eggs for breakfast. Right? I'll wear shorts today. I won't be upset by the tone of somebody else's voice. I won't react. Right? Or or. I just, I won't say it, I can't today. How's that for a good one? Praise the Lord. All right. So as you choose, you collapse the probabilities into an actuality. So you've got all these possibilities until you make a choice. And once you make a choice, all of those possibilities collapse into a one, into one reality, whatever that choice was that you made. Right? Okay, look at John chapter 8 and verse 44. It's amazing to me. This this freaks me out. You you are the father of the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Satan's going to come, and he comes at you with a thousand probabilities. Right? He, he comes at you with all these probabilities, but you always need to remember that a probability has no power. It's just a probability. Until there's a decision made, it's just a probability. So it doesn't have any power in itself. That's why God stripped Satan of his power. The only power he's got is to influence the way we think, so we, it will influence our ways. Praise the Lord. So uh, the, then the, probably, the probability itself has no power. It only becomes powerful when you believe the lie and collapse the probabilities into actuality. Am I making sense? Right? That's what, the, that's what the devil is doing with us all the time. And what happens? When we believe the lie and we collapse all the probabilities into that reality, evil is born. It's what James is talking about when he says, you know, that you should uh, be careful what comes out of your mouth because evil can come out Right? If you're not careful, if you don't put a guard over your thoughts, the next thing you know, you're producing the reality of evil. Out of ignorance. But you're still doing it. It's you that has the power to do this. Praise the Lord. Look at, let's look at this. Proverbs chapter 4, and we'll read verses 20 through 27. What's beautiful about this is not that we get so smart by reading a book about quantum physics, but that it validates everything that God is telling us that we should do. And it gives us a natural kind of format that we can see the tangibleness of this invisibility, this spiritual endeavor that we think of it as. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life 
unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. He's talking about the Word of God here. Focus. Get your thinking on that. Amen. Because their life to those who find them and health to their flesh, to all their flesh, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Praise the Lord. But put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Now, that's anything that disagrees with the word of God. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. So, intentional acts agree with the Word of God. Amen? That's what, the, that's what we're looking at here. If you, t if you take an intentional act of agreeing with the Word of God, amen, the result or the outcome is healing and health. That's what the Bible teaches. In other words, you think the thought, you believe that thought, you, you intentionally declare that thought, and the result is healing. Healing and health. It's a promise from God. Amen? You can evaluate. L look at this. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. You can evaluate Deuteronomy 30, 19 the very same way. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Praise the Lord. Say what God says. And get what God says. Get the results. He's telling us, this is how it works. You make a choice. You make the choice, and once you've made that choice, you collapse everything into that reality. That becomes your reality now. I choose life. I choose God. I choose healing. I choose deliverance. And the reality is then, because I have collapsed all these other probabilities into that one reality, that's what I think on. That's what I end up getting. That's why we say what we believe. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why we read the Bible. That's why we study the Bible. That's why we memorize Scripture. Praise the Lord. Not to please God, although it's pleasing to God, but because it puts us in the position where we can receive what God has given us. Our thoughts become like God's thoughts, therefore our ways end up becoming like God's ways. Praise the Lord. So life, death, blessing, curses, those are the options. Now choose. And he even gives you the answer. Choose life. Here's your options. Here's the probabilities. Make a choice. You have a free will. You can choose. You intentionally evaluate the options and you choose your reaction to it. Think about it. That's what we do every single day. Somebody gets mad. Somebody says something really stupid to you. Usually we don't think long enough. We just react. But if we were to think, we would choose to not retaliate in kind. Right? And the result would be we get what we say. But we, a lot of times, end up reacting in the same way that the other person is, choosing to say that, okay, that's the only probability there is here. They're angry. I'm going to be angry. And everything ex accelerates and magnifies and gets worse instead of getting better. Praise the Lord. Here's an example. You get a call from the doctor. I had this happen when they diagnosed me with hepatitis C. I never thought anything about it. They were just doing liver scans and blood tests. I get a call from the doctor. Call us back as soon as possible. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The test results are in. Call us as soon as you can. Multiple thoughts come to your head. Option one, fear. As soon as possible. That must mean bad news. Get right back to him. The test results are in. What if I have cancer? What if I have heart disease? I mean, that's all the stuff. That's one of the options that goes through a person's head when they get a call like that, right? Option number two is denial. Because that's a routine thing. And I'll call when I get the time. Option three is trust. I have faith that this is going to be good news. 
I'm not going to be moved by any doctor's report. By his stripes I was healed. Right? So, you make a choice. And here's the, the hypothetical here. You choose an option. For instance, if you choose fear, your brain responds by wiring in the thought, I'm sick. Amen? I'm sick. And you live into that thought. Praise the Lord. The consequence, you suddenly feel sick. And you're just sure it's terminal. You ever get around somebody and, and they're talking about fleas or they're talking about ticks or whatever? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It isn't long before... Now, maybe I'm just a little more OCD than the average person, but I'm, I'm feeling stuff and I'm itching and I'm uncomfortable and I'm just, I'm sure I've got them too. You know, I, I gotta get home and get some tick powder on me or, you know, something. I gotta, these things are gonna make me crazy because I've made a choice, right? And now I'm living into that reality. I'm thinking it, so it becomes real to me. I actually begin to feel it. Now, I don't have them, but I'm feeling them, right? Because I'm sure that I must have them. Because I've just made a decision, right? So, you're sure that you're dying. So, here's a new consequence. You call the doctor. Your results are clear. Everything's fine. And suddenly you feel okay. A little stupid, maybe, for thinking that you were dying and everything a moment ago. But all of a sudden, you feel 100% better. Why? Because you think you ought to. You're not sick anymore. Even though a half hour ago, you were sure you were dying. So your brain becomes what you focused on. Right? Because it's doing the thinking. So your brain becomes what you focused on. And your body carries out the will of your spirit and your soul or your thinking processes. That's its job. That's what it's supposed to do. And what your brain has began, uh, begun to produce is whatever you have thought. So it, it, it produces what you say and you do, and it creates how you feel physically and mentally. Come on, this is Bible. Whether I, I mean, I'm giving you some vague things here, but, but I'm saying this is what the Bible teaches us. And people kind of just laugh this off and say, well, you know, I, you know so I'll, I'll say it if I think of it, but you need to be, you need your mind renewed so that the first thought that comes to you when you get that negative is, no, no, not here. No sickness is coming into this body. You know, that's why we say these things, not just for the sake of saying them, but to create a different way of thinking when we are faced with these things. Because the devil's going to bring you all these stories about, oh, well, you know, so-and-so had it, you're going to get it now, and after all, you're over 40, so, you know, expect bad stuff is going to happen, and, you know, the older you get, the worse it's going to get. That's not what the Bible says. It says our health, our strength ought to be just like the same when we're 120 years old. It shouldn't be failing just because we're 100. I don't want to live to be 100 years old in a walker with a, you know, tank stuffed in me and not knowing who I am or where I am or anything else. That's not life. That's not what God's talking about when He tells us we get life. Amen. Our lives ought to be as good at the end. You know, something. I, I'm going to die healthy. Praise the Lord. Now, that may not be a good way to go. Maybe somebody puts a gun on me or something, but I'm just saying, I don't plan on being all crippled up and, and maimed and everything else. Now, because I'm, I don't want to make that choice. And it's not being selfish or self-centered. It's what God has promised us. Amen? And so we need to understand how it is that it works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, Hebrews 11.1. Now, here's, here's a scripture, and then I'll give you what quantum physics has discovered, what science has learned. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Faith is the substance 
of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Just leave that there for a second, and let me tell you what they've discovered. Thoughts are real, physical things. They occupy mental real estate. Thoughts actually take up space, although minute, it still takes up space. What's the difference if it's, you know, the the large world or the tiny world? It's the same. You know, God's outside of all of this. But I'm just saying, what they've discovered is thoughts, when you think a thought, it actually takes up space in your brain. It's it's physical, in other words. It's not just some, you know, vaporous thing. It's It literally takes up space. It's physical. Thoughts are physical. Praise the Lord. So, moment by moment, every day, we change the structure of our brain through the way we think. I'm gonna, I'm, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but there is what they call neuroplasticity, which, which is simply that your brain is malleable. In other words, it, 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 it changes. You get new, uh, uh, new cells, new brain cells every morning. Every day. They're renewed. It's like God says, every day, my, my mercies are new. Every morning. Every morning you get a chance to think different. To get different results. To get different outcomes. God's mercies are new every day. He gives us this renewal of the natural mind every day so that we can renew the Spirit by the Word of God. Amen? So, the way you experience your feelings, the way that you uh, interface with your thoughts, and the kind of attention that you give them is going to change how your brain functions. Right? That's why he tells us to renew our minds to the Word of God. We can change our brains. We can change the way our minds function. Amen? By what we think. That's simplistic, but it's still true. Hallelujah. So, uh, i got notes scribbled sideways and everything else on here. So if you hope, when you hope, it's an activity of the mind that changes the structure of your brain into a positive, and in God's mind, a normal direction. That's what hope does. That's why he says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you hope, you literally change the structure of your brain into a positive rather than a negative, into what God calls the normal direction that you should be thinking. Amen? All right, Matthew chapter 9 and uh, verses 20 through 22. Matthew 9, 20 through 22. This is a story about the woman with the issue of blood. Now, for 12 years she's had this thing going on, right? Behold, a woman who was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I'll be made whole. Okay? So here's this desperate woman, you know, just desperate for healing. And when she heard about Jesus, who heals, been healing everybody, she's heard about him, she started directing intentions with each bit of information she received. Every time she heard about another healing, right? She directed her intentions, right, in a positive way. Every time she'd hear another story, another episode of where he had healed this person, healed that person, her thinking is being directed in a certain direction, right? Okay? So her intention, with each bit of information she receives, she's focusing, she's she's changing her her, her, the direction of her thinking. And it culminates eventually in the physical thought in her mind of her healing. It becomes a physical thought in her brain. It becomes tangible according to Hebrews 1. This hope all of a sudden becomes substance. It's substance here first. Right? 
It's reality in the spirit realm, but something has to change here. We have to get the mind of Christ. We have to put on what Paul says, put on the mind. If you have the mind of Christ, put on the mind of Christ. It's, it's available to you, but you've got to activate it. And this is how it works. Amen? So, so she's, she's thinking in her mind of her healing and believing it in her heart. Amen? In effect, she was applying Genesis 11, verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. These are unbelievers. But that's reality that's beginning to take place. That's why the, the Tower of Babel, that's why the, the dispersing of, of the peoples and changing their languages, because they were thinking as one. This is exactly what Tim was talking about. When we get somebody to pray with us, we get somebody who's thinking the same thing we're thinking. We're magnifying that reality, and God moves. When these people got together and started agreeing on what they were going to do, God had to shut it down. It was getting so powerful that they said they were going to reach heaven, and they might have if God hadn't interceded. That's His intention for the church, for us to agree, to be one so that we can get the results that God intended us to have, so we can influence this world the way Jesus did. And it starts right here. Well, actually, it starts here. But unless we renew our minds, this isn't going to do us any good till we die. And it doesn't impact anybody else to any great degree. Amen? All right, look at Hebrews 11 and 1 again. Our faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, which means, which tells me that the thought is reality. If you can stay focused, if you can stay focused on the right thought, on the Word of God, my Word will not come back void. If I could find somebody that agrees with my thinking, they will get my ways. They will get the results. This is why we were had to be born again. We had to become new creatures, amen, in order to produce what God intended. To stop the natural evolution, if you will, for lack of a better word, of disease, sickness, and all the curse that happened with Adam, right? I mean, the results of every human being is we've got Adam's DNA. Every single one of us have DNA from Adam. And it's cursed, Right? So God gives us a new birth, born from above. Now we have God's DNA. Right? But you've got to start thinking that way in order to produce it. That's why he tells us to renew our minds. That's why he says, keep this word before you. Don't let it depart from your lips. Praise the Lord. That's how this woman developed her faith and aligned herself with the healing power of God. And in doing that, she built a root thought. Right? She just kept focusing. He's healing this one. He's healing that one. If I could just get to him, if I could just touch him, I'll be healed. That's the root thought. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Okay? So she, she develops this root thought. She acts on it. Right? And the result is, she's healed. It started with a thought. And Jesus said, I've never seen this kind of faith. And she's thinking, well, I just thought that, praise the Lord. She collapsed all of the probabilities into one. I'm going to be like this forever. Someday maybe I'll find a doctor that can cure me. You know, I'm getting weaker. It's not going to happen. This is only going to get worse. It's, it's, I'm broke now. I'm never going to be able to. 
No, she collapsed all of those options, all those different thoughts into, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And the result was, she was healed. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen? She wasn't thinking one thing and confessing something else. She was focused that she was going to be healed. Right? She wasn't thinking, I don't know, maybe I'll be healed, maybe I won't, and then confessing something else. Or she wasn't believing that she could be healed or would be healed, and then confessing that, you know, things are just, the doctor just told me today that it's not looking any better, and it's only gotten worse. And you understand what I'm saying? That's being double-minded. A double-minded man can never get anything from God because he's unstable in all of his ways. Praise the Lord. So science shows us the beauty of what happens when we align with God, when we agree with God. Science is a way for God to show us that we are part of Him. Praise the Lord. We are one with God. We are one. And science is showing us that is true. God is using science to reveal to us that we are one with God, that we are part of God. And when we follow His laws, we reap the benefits. Amen? God, we know this, God is outside of space and time. Amen? And science says our thoughts, the signals, the the synapses, whatever you want to call them, the thoughts that we have move faster than the speed of light. And in ways that classical physics can't explain. That's why they have to develop quantum physics. It can't explain the effects that we have on each other. Praise the Lord. You ever walk into a room, somebody's got a negative attitude? Pray it in long before you're negative. Right? You can go in and actually feel the negativity in a room. Right? We are connected. Humans have connections that we're not even really understanding. Praise the Lord. But it gives us a glimpse of the spiritual side of the world that is beyond space and time. See, God has put in us this... And so there's a, there's a scientist, um, Heisen something, Heisen, Heisenberg, not the guy from uh, Breaking Bad, <laughs> in case anybody ever saw it. Heisenberg was a guy who, who taught the negativity, the, the fact that uh, everything is disconnected, that nothing really uh, connects totally. Everything is, there's a disconnect in everything. The reason for that is, the reason I can't read your mind or I can't predict the future is because God wants us to trust Him. So there are limits in terms of, you know, the, the eternity, eternal life and, and, and even in the natural life. But God has placed in us this eternal life. But because of the nature of man, he has limited our ability to see into the future so that we'll trust him. The day's coming when you'll know all things. Amen? But not now. Now you need to trust God. Now you need to have confidence in God. You need to think God's thoughts and say what God says about the situation. Amen? So it gives us a glimpse of the spiritual side of the world that is beyond time and space. Look at this in Matthew 28, 18. All 
Aren't you glad you came tonight? Praise the Lord. Anybody got a headache? <laughs> Forward. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. I want you to look at that. This is the Word of God. Jesus came and spake unto them. This is Jesus speaking. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Which means Satan has zero, zippo, nada, no power. I don't care what evangelists say or anybody else says. I'm saying what Jesus said is that he has all power. Meaning, Satan has no power. Amen? It's through the senses that we receive Satan's lies. Amen? Through the five senses. But, and this is important, we don't have to believe those lies. If we do believe them, we process them into physical realities. If you believe the lie, you know, it's like the old kind of joke. It says, if you get up this morning and say it's going to be a great day, it will. If you get up this morning saying it's going to be a lousy day, it will. It's like the old farmer I heard this guy talking about the other day. He's uh, out on the edge of this little town and this guy drives in and Asks to get some water and, and, uh, says, sure, and gives him some water and the, and the guy asking for the water says to the farmer, he says, what, what kind of town is this? What's it, what's it like? And the guy says, well, what was the town like that you used to live in? Oh, I said it was full of people that were always backstabbing and talking about you and rude and hard to get along with. And, and the guy says, oh, this town's just like that. A few minutes later, another guy pulls in, asks him for some water. He says, uh, I'm moving here. My wife and I and kids were moving to this town. He said, what's it like? And the farmer says, what was the town like that you just left? And he said, oh, it was a great place. Everybody was friendly. and Everybody tried to look out for one another. And it was a safe community and people loved one another. And the farmer says, this town's just like that. So it's what? You know, it's us is the bottom line here. If we believe, then we process that into physical realities. Through the conscious cognitive to the non-conscious metacognitive that form the substance of the nerve networks upon which we act, that means that if we listen to and believe the enemy's lives, lies, excuse me, we actually choose to process them into physical realities inside of our brains. They become physical. They become real. Thoughts are more than just thoughts. Amen? God has given us the power to create. This creative force can be good or evil, depending on the choices. Neuroscience and quantum physics confirm that our thoughts change our brains every day. Neuroplasticity, which I spoke of earlier, is the principle that, that deep thinking actually changes brain structure and function. And that's why God says, stay in my word. Meditate in it day and night. That's called deep thinking. And what that does is literally change the form of your mind. Hallelujah. It's called putting on the mind of Christ. This may sound like a bunch of just psycho babble here, but I'm saying what science is finding out, God has been telling us about for years, for millennia. And it's, I think it's high time we start taking it seriously. And not just a random here or there and confess it because, you know, it pops up in front of our face. But so that it's a way of thinking. That our minds are actually renewed and formed differently than they were before. Because we're a new creature. Our spirit is brand new. Our body's the same body. Our mind has to agree with our spirit in order to get this body to do what it's supposed to do. Or any body for that matter. Any physical reality. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This plastic ability of the brain to change in positive or negative 
directions, depending on our state of mind, is called the plastic paradox. Praise the Lord. I like that. Plastic paradox. Uh, look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart, nevertheless the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Praise the Lord. Now well, here's a revelation for you. We can easily move through air, but not through a wall. Right? Radio waves can carry a man's voice, and we know this historically, all the way from the surface of the moon to the earth. And we know beyond that now. And gamma rays can do fatal damage to DNA. So on the face of it, these, these different phenomena have nothing to do with each other. But physicists have uncovered a handful of principles that fuse into a theory of sublime simplicity to explain all that and more. And it's called particle physics. And in it, it explains the electromagnetic force, which is all the waves, whether it's gamma rays, light waves, uh, radio waves, radar, uh, any, any of the waves out there. Those are all part of the electromagnetic force. So it tells you how uh, these particle physics, and it explains the electromagnetic forces that make a wall feel solid. The nuclear forces that govern diverse light waves that both make modern communication possible and threaten our well-being at the same time. Right? The gamma rays can kill us, mess up our DNA. But the other waves, sun rays, heat the earth, replenish it, do all of those things. So they seem to be like they're, they're, they're uh, disconnected. But in fact, they are connected. Thoughts are moving faster than light. And they can be either good or evil. When your mind... I'm, I'm going to quit. When your mind is totally connected with God, that wall will be no different than air. The wall won't be any different you will. Jesus walked right through the walls, right through the door. He still had a body that was flesh and bone. It was solid. It was a, it was a natural in turn. It just didn't operate by a heart pump and blood. By the Spirit it operated. But it was still a physical body. You're going to get a physical body. But it's not going to be subject to to the natural laws. Why? Because you will have the mind of Christ. You will know all things. And God has already put that in place in us. It's a question of how much we develop it in this world. That is what depends, or that is what makes the difference in terms of how much of the promises of God, how much of these blessings and these uh, promises or inheritance of God we actually experience and enjoy. God has made it possible. So we say, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you read your Bible. You'll still go to heaven. Yeah. But very little heaven is going to be coming here. Right? Because you're not, you're still thinking the way a natural man thinks. So much of the time, we are still carnally minded. doesn't make us evil. doesn't mean that we're you know, thinking, you know, perverse and weird and ugly and hateful. It just means we're not thinking like God. And the result is 
when somebody does tap into this, even in ignorance, healings happen. Miracles take place. Imagine if we had a concerted effort and really understood what it is we're supposed to be doing and what the outcome of that will be. I believe, my personal feeling is, the reason these things, and you say, well, come on, Nate, I mean, this is just science crap. I mean, I don't need, really need to hear this. I'm, I'm only saying this because I believe we are in the last days. Knowledge will increase. And it's, there's a reason. Knowledge isn't bad. Science isn't bad. It's just, the, it's just the people that are controlling the output of it. They don't understand it. They don't get it. Amen? That's why I, th I forget who, who the scientist was now, but one man said, yeah, science, he said, it's just one funeral after another. Meaning, one thing that they believe today, they have to bury five years from now because it wasn't true. They're, they argue against something until it's proven wrong. Until they're proven wrong, and God is still proven right. And God's trying to tell us, look, you can change this world. But it starts with being born again and then getting your mind renewed to agree with who you are in Christ. Paul says it over and over. You have the mind of Christ. Put on the mind of Christ. Think God thoughts. And we've always kind of had it in our head that that means, well, I'm just going around thinking pristine, holy stuff. No, we live in a real world. We need to think like God if we're going to do the works of God. Jesus said, greater works than these you do because I go to my Father. I'm sending back the Spirit. You can cooperate with that Spirit. And the only way you can really, truly cooperate with that Spirit is by knowing what the Word of God says. Because the Spirit is only going to do what the mind of God is saying. It's in perfect tune with the will of God because it has the mind of God. So we need to put on the mind of Christ. We don't need to be able to, uh, obviously, be able to you know, quote all the science and everything else. But to understand, it's simple. Thoughts are real, physical things. They actually take up space. And so God has given us the ability not only to think that physical thought, but to make it a reality when we speak it, believing in agreement with whatever His Word has said. That's what you'll find over and over and over in the Bible, everywhere you look. Everywhere you start looking in here, if you start looking to see where it talks about the mind of God, my, the mind of man, it's God trying to tell us, look, you got to, you have to be born again because I can't loose that kind of power in an unregenerated life. That's what happened to Babel. So he's trying to get us to understand because the average person, they don't read the Bible, and if they did read it, they wouldn't get anything out of it anyway because they're spiritually dead. It's just history. But because we have the mind of Christ, we can put on the mind of Christ and we can think God thoughts and we can declare what God has said about any given situation and it will be done unto us even as we believe. Right? As our thoughts dictate, so will our lives go. Hallelujah. You don't need to be... I mean, please don't get me wrong and don't be, you know, feel bad or whatever if you're, if you're struggling with issues or sickness or whatever. Come on. God is trying to develop us. What we have to do is focus on from day on, from today on, how I'm going to deal with these things, how I'm going to deal with a doctor's report. It doesn't mean you don't go to the doctor. It doesn't mean you don't take the advice of a doctor. It just means that the final word is still God's word. God has the last word, and that's who we need to be in, in, in touch with. That's why it would be so great if all physicians were Christians. Honestly. Because not only will they give you their expertise as a physician, but they can agree with you and pray with you. When you find a Christian physician or a Christian professional of any kind, you've hit the jackpot. You've hit the mother load. That's the person you want to be connected with. Now, I know everybody that claims to be a Christian isn't all they should be, but nevertheless, God has given us this ability to unite, to come together in like mind. And buddy, we can change the world. If we couldn't, he wouldn't have told us that. But obviously, it isn't going to happen by us operating the same way the world does. You can't just do it through promotions and programs. It takes each one of us and all of us collectively operating in agreement with this word.
to transform this world into a place of beauty, of God's reality, of healing and deliverance. Amen? You say, well, that's, that's, that's impossible. Well, as you think, so shall it be. I'm saying we can change the world. I'm saying we can change it beginning with each one of us and then everybody that we come into contact with. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for your patience and endurance. The Lord bless you. See you Sunday. Y'all, let's pray for Mike and Cindy. They're going to be gone Sunday. I meant to do this at the very beginning, but let's all just pray for them. They're going to be gone for the weekend. Going to get a little time away and Let's just pray for God's uh, renewing and uh, restoration and blessing. And so, Father, we just thank you.